Hi, everyone. For those who might not know, I am Frances Krinka, and I am a summer student working for Manitoba Agriculture to coordinate the Japan Homestay Program. This is my second, second year working with the program, and I'm looking forward to working with you and the Japanese students who want to seem to make this another successful year for everyone involved. This presentation will, presentation will cover the following items. History and program objectives, student itinerary, program guidelines, post obligations, and Japanese culture. To begin, I would like to start off by talking a little bit about the program history. The YBS was founded in 1985 with the intention of providing travel opportunities to the Japanese students. The YBS is supported by York, York Ben Maru, which is a large grocery chain in Japan. The travel program to Manitoba began in 1987 after Manitoba Agriculture showed interest in the program. They suggested to YBS that they include Manitoba as part of their exchange program and that while in Manitoba, they live with Manitoban families and thought families involved in 4-H would be the perfect fit for this program. Nowadays, the three major partners that sponsor and support the program are YBS, Manitoba 4-H Council, and Manitoba Agriculture. The three objectives of the program are to create cross-cultural awareness, foster closer ties between Manitoba and Japan, and promote Manitoba agriculture. So to create cross-cultural awareness, um, goals of the exchange program is to introduce students to many aspects of Manitoba, including rural and farm living. The best way for you to help achieve this goal is to essentially treat your student as part of the family. Many of the students are very eager to learn and try activities that are new to them. So we encourage you to include your student in daily family activities. While the students are here to learn new things, you as a host family also have the opportunity to, opportunity to learn. Students may show their culture, such as how to cook traditional Japanese dishes. To foster closer ties between Manitoba and Japan, this is a common theme that has been carried throughout the program history of friendship. Programs like the Japan Homestay help build and strengthen our friendship with Japan. And to promote the agriculture, introduce your student to rural living in Manitoba and act as a cultural ambassador for Manitoba agriculture. The student itinerary. The students will arrive in Winnipeg on July 27th after spending a week in Seattle where they will be staying at the university and studying English. They arrive into Winnipeg in the evening and then on July 28th, the students will spend the day in Winnipeg with our translator, Kyoko, Manitoba Agricultural staff, and myself. The day will be spent touring and sightseeing around Winnipeg and we plan on taking the students to the legislative building Canola Learning Center, a dairy farm, as well as the Fort White Alive. On July 29th, the welcome party will be held in which the host families will attend. The party will begin at 11 a.m. and will be held in the banquet room of the PCU Center in Portage La Prairie. This is where you'll meet your student for the first time, and once the party has concluded, you and your student will depart home for the homestay portion of the program. August 12th is the date of the Sayonara, which is set to begin at 5 p.m. and is located at the King Cole, Bank, King Cole Catering Banquet Center in Domain, also known as the Maine Community Center. At the conclusion of the party, you will say goodbye to your student and they will depart from Winnipeg. On August 13th, the students will begin their journey back home and are scheduled to fly to Winnipeg at 10.05 in the morning. Introducing your students. Before your student arrives, please email your student and introduce your family to them. Sending pictures and sharing some interests of your family is a good way to do this. And the small instruction is likely to help alleviate some of the nervousness the student may be feeling. Arrival at home. When the student arrives to your home, show the student their room and where to put their luggage. A spare room for your student is not necessary, the student may share a room with a family member of the same gender. Having a few empty drawers or closet space for the student to store their clothes is encouraged and prevents students from having to live out of a suitcase during their stay. These recommendations are all part of the process to ensuring the student feels accepted and welcome in your home. With that in mind, 
other students some alone time every once in a while. They might need to catch one some homework as the school schedule from Japan is different than ours here in Manitoba. They run a three semester system. Their first semester is from April to the end of July. Then they have August off. Their second semester is then from September to December. And finally, their third semester runs from January to March. They have a break from March to April before their school year begins all over again. So don't be surprised if your student might require a bit of time to do their homework, especially since this program is based out of their school. They might be required to keep a bit of a journal or write reflections about the program. After a student has been shown their room, the next thing you should do is give them a tour of your home, allowing them to become familiarized with the rooms in your house, explain any house rules you have, and what your daily family routine might consist of. The student should understand that they will be expected to follow the same rules as their own children do. Showing your student how to use any kitchen appliances, such as a toaster, microwave, or kettle, as well as the location of food and snacks, should be discussed at this point. After showing the student around your house, they should be given a tour of your yard farm. Many students will be unfamiliar with the aspects of a farm, such as machinery and animals. Please explain to the students if there are any areas that are off limits or where caution is necessary. You might want to let your student rest a bit after this. They will have had a busy past couple of days and there's a lot for a student to take on in their first day of living with a new family. The students not only have to follow these rules, in the event of a medical emergency, the student's well-being will be of utmost importance. If students need is in need of medical attention, take the student to the nearest medical treatment center, make sure that they have their medical form, passport, and any medical insurance with you. A hospital staff or doctor will need to know of any medical history the student has. There may be a fee for medical care the student receives as they are not a resident of Canada. Please pay this fee and you'll be reimbursed. Contact myself or Leanne Scrum, as well as the chaperone. If you're not able to reach anyone at the office, please call the home or cell phone numbers provided in the orientation handbook. Ask for a seat of any fees as well as a doctor's report on the student's condition. These pieces of information will be needed for insurance purposes so that you can be reimbursed if police are involved request an accident report. Assure students they are in good hands and one of the chaperones has been informed of the situation. Leanne and myself will contact one of the chaperones who will be in contact with the student. The coordinator will also communicate with the York Center Marie Foundation and the student's parents. While the students are in Manitoba, they are not to operate a motor vehicle. Japanese students are unable to get their license until they turn 18, and the rules of the road are very different in Canada than they are in Japan. Therefore, driving is not permitted. There is to be no use of alcohol or tobacco. The legal drinking age in Japan is 20, and although a few students may be 18, drinking alcohol is still prohibited. Give the student your name, address, and contact numbers in case they become separated from you. If traveling to the U.S., ensure the student has his or her passport. If your student has lost their passport, contact me immediately so we can begin working on getting a replacement and ensure your student keeps the passport in a safe place. While short excursions to the U.S. and other provinces are allowed, the primary focus of the program is to remain in Manitoba. Therefore, the program coordinator must be made aware beforehand if plans to leave the province are made. Take care to avoid traffic, water, or other recreational accidents. When going on a boat, a life jacket must be worn and take caution when swimming, especially in lakes. Prior to participating in water activities, it's a good idea to ask about the level of swimming skills. Ask your students if they can swim or not before entering any body of water. If you click on the link um, on the website, there is the information on the insurance. This provides the detail on the Manitoba 4-H ins insurance. Um, there is personal accident insurance. 
which covers participants that have an accident on a no fault basis, regardless of whether 4H was negligent. The insurance is ineffective if an accident happens and one of the following gets hurt. Members, leaders, volunteers and staff, non-member guests, which is known as buddy coverage. A buddy is an unregistered guest, for example, a friend or sibling of a registered 4-H member who is invited to participate along with all the members in a 4-H activity or event approved by and under the supervision of 4-H. Safety for all participants is always a priority. So, for example, children under age should not be the handling large animals, which isn't going to apply to the Japanese students. When in doubt about the appropriateness of an activity, please contact the Manitoba 4-H office. Any incident involving 4-H should be reported promptly to the Manitoba 4-H Council office or the Japanese host staff. Generally, the head leader or the host family ensures the information is recorded, regardless of whether the incident seems minor and does not require further follow-up. There is a specific part about watercraft insurance. Following negotiations with the National Forage Insurance Provider, coverage for the use of watercraft has been approved based on the following. Watercraft are less than eight meters in length. All persons are required to wear life jackets while in the watercraft. All watercraft must contain a baler, a buoyant throw slash tow line, and a signaling device, i.e. a whistle or flashlight. White water and ocean exposure are included from this insurance. Expenses. We ask that you treat your Japanese guests like a family member. If you go out as a family, please pay the admission fees or activity costs for your student as well. This does not mean that you need to plan activities and outings for every day, nor are you expected to. Remember, the students are here to experience Manitoba and the Canadian culture. Simple things such as bonfires, going on a hike or walk, grocery shopping, and playing sports will be new and exciting, new and exciting experiences for the students. Japanese culture. Shinju and Buddhism are the most popular form of religion found in Japan, and it is good to understand that their religious views may be different than the ones that you hold, and we ask that you respect their beliefs. The primary language is Japanese. One of the challenges of this program is the language barrier, but it can be dealt with in a number of ways. First off, these students do study English in school, so they will have been learning English already, but will still be eager to learn more. Don't feel discouraged if what you want to communicate doesn't get across at first. It will take some time and understand that they will learn, so don't give up and keep trying. It is best to speak slowly and soft while repeating certain words as well as using frequent gestures. Hand gestures and facial expressions are a good way to find mutual understanding. Remember that about 90% of communication consists of body language and a smile is always universal. The use of visual aids such as drawing, is also a great way to assist in communication. Students may feel left out or irritated if there's whispering or talking, or talking around them that they are unable to understand. It is always good to keep in mind the main goal, to treat them as part of your family, and this includes family conversations. Gift giving. Gift giving is very much a part of life in Japan. The Japanese love to give gifts. This is, this is a habit not only practiced on special occasions, but is also widely accepted as a social duty and obligation. Gift giving is an accepted practice encountered every day. Gifts are a token of appreciation to the Jap Japanese. Your student will want to take Canadian and Manitoban gifts back home with them. We discourage families from spending a lot of money on these gifts. It's not about the material value, it's about the thought behind it. Personalized or homemade gifts are appropriate, and there's a section on our handbook that talks about a photo genealogy as well as, as a way to make a personalized gift. Bathing. Bathing is a common daily routine in Japan, and it is very relaxing. Usually what happens is they will have a bath after they are done washing. They may take a while in the bathroom, so be prepared for this. Being patient and understanding is key. It is the ultimate way to respect their customs. 
bowing is to show respect and is a very important feature in Japanese etiquette. Children in Japan are taught how to bow properly at a very young age. There are three different kinds of bowing, informal, formal, and very formal. The longer and deeper the bow, the more formal it is. Also, the longer and deeper the bow, the stronger the emotion and respect expressed. It is common in Japan to bow for many different reasons, including when they are greeting someone, to apologize, to make a request, or to ask for a favor and express thanks. Food. It is not necessary to make Japanese meals for the student. Part of learning, part of the learning experience for the student is to try foods they don't usually eat. Canadian cuisine is strongly encouraged, so try to maintain your normal way of life as much as possible. Everyone, everyone once in a while, you can add food that they are accustomed to, like rice or fish. If your student does not like a certain dish, do not try and force them to eat it. In your student's information booklet, which I will be sending out, each student has stated what kind of food they like or dislike and if they have any. So please take those into consideration when preparing meals. Main course meals can include chicken, fish, or whatever you eat as a family regularly. Beef is very expensive in Japan, so as a treat, you could make cheeseburgers or a barbecue a steak. It is common to eat fruit for dessert in Japan, not sweet. This is not to say that they never eat anything with sugar. You can take the student out for ice cream as a treat. Culture shock. It is likely that your Japanese student will experience culture shock. Culture shock is described as a loss of emotional balance disorientation or confusion that a person feels when moving from a familiar environment to an unfamiliar one. The degree to which each student experiences it will differ based on their personality, experience, background, and language abilities. Frustration, worry, and the inability to sleep are signs that a student might be struggling with the changes in culture. Asking your guests if they would like to help you prepare a meal, meet up with another host family in your area, or contact the chaperone are all things that are likely to help your student adjust to change. I will be setting up a conference call meeting and then I can answer any questions that still remain. Thank you for listening.